asked me if they, do it. they one time they left on a, they were all gone on Sunday night, and there's uh, no reason to hang around on Monday. So uh, that's happened once or twice before, and uh, also it's because they're outraged at the turnout and so forth, and those dirty, rotten nationalists who give them so much problem. And of course, they're overwhelmed with what's happened in recent years. Uh, they've they've been very depressed every year since then. As we mentioned before, they in the 1990s they were confidently uh, predicting we'd have a a world government by the year 2000. That's 12 years ago, uh, and they've been going back. And it's because of the increasing public awareness. The, uh, the Europeans give it. Excuse me, heavy attention. The uh, uh, independent newspapers in this country, uh, about yes, uh, 100 of them, uh, give this uh, uh, proper attention. Not the Washington Post, the LA Times, or the New York Times, each of which control uh, more than 100 newspapers, small, from small dailies to uh, middle-sized dailies in middle-sized cities, along with their uh, uh, main newspaper, and they can impose a Bilderberg ban on all of their papers, but they cannot impose that same ban on a privately owned newspaper, not part of anybody's chain, or maybe its own small chain somewhere. And that's like AmericanFreePress.net, uh, the Epoch Times, Infowars.com. You know, Drudge Report is the number one driver of news worldwide. The, uh, it drives more than Twitter and Facebook combined. How big has it been that Matt Drudge, who's, uh, I know, uh, tunes in occasionally, I'll just leave it at that, um, that, uh, hi Matt, that uh, Matt has been posting and covering Bilderberg the last five years or so? Uh, uh, the Drudge Report? Yes, sir. Yeah. I don't see it very much. I'm not very good on these computer things. I try to find No, things. no, I understand. I'm just saying that's really got to upset them, that the biggest oh, yes. uh, well, biggest the, one news source in the world is, is covering it. Well, the, uh, so the uh, European newspapers have covered it since we uh, were able... Uh, well, that started some years ago when our then spotlight readers wrote in after hearing reading our, our story about Bilderberg we got it earlier that year of where they're going to meet and when and said should we uh, should we call up the uh, local media and contact them well I should have thought about that years ago and I said yes yes and that was the year I think it was Sweden or some such place uh, upper island countries of the continent uh for the first time, Henry Kissinger and the others were shocked when they got off their helicopters and uh, walking toward their limousines to be uh, confronted with 100, uh, well, not 100 at that point, but uh, maybe 40 reporters yelling uh, questions at them. They were just simply stunned. And it's, it's gotten worse for them, obviously, ever since, because now when Bilderberg uh, meets, we send a letter from American Free Press to uh, all of our readers within a 200-mile circumference, telling them about it, suggesting they contact their media, and they do. It's beautiful what's happening, and people should subscribe to get that amazing reportage at AmericanFreePress.net. There's also a phone number there on the site when Mark Anderson's on later. I'll be sure and uh, and uh, give that number. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, Jim, if you happen to have it, you're welcome to give it out. But quickly now, because I've been bringing up a lot of subjects, in the five, six minutes... Uh, Okay, okay, Mark Anderson is there. He'll be he'll be coming back in a moment. Uh, is Jim still there? Oh, that's what I was wondering. Okay, good. Yes, Jim had to step up to get Mark Anderson uh, into the hotel room. Okay, I understand. Same thing we're doing here. Okay, but let's bring Tukier. That's what they call him in uh, in uh, Turkey. <laughs> that's, his, that's his nickname. Hey, uh, uh, are you there, Jim? Yeah, Mark's, Mark's in the door now. Okay, we're going to go to him after the break in five minutes. Jim, without me interrupting you, I know you've got several sources, let's just leave it at that, that are permanent sources. Has your source contacted you yet with their concerns or what's on the main agenda versus the little fake press release they put out? Can you give us the data dump on, uh, so far, what you've got? Well, uh, yes, uh, Van Rump. 
Poi, President of the European Council, and Jeans Hyphen Claude Trickett, President of the European Central Bank, they're going to make a presentation on uh, how to fix the world economy. Uh, I'm not sure just which day they're going to do it. Uh, and there's going to be a, a big discussion on the global economy, China, Europe, and the European Euro. Uh, and they, in the events, uh, expect Merkel to be, uh, as in the lady prime minister of Germany, to uh, catch a lot of grief at this meeting. She normally attends, and I think she will. And then just today, on CBS Good Morning, former Secretary of Defense Robert Gates praises Obama uh, and suggests that war is necessary. So, uh, yes, they're still psyching up for uh, a war on uh, well, for Israel to attack Iran so the Americans will come in and do uh, most of the bleeding and dying and, of course, uh, pay for the war, too. So uh, Gates has attended in the past, will probably be there uh, uh, this weekend, uh, even just today. Call on the uh, public to support uh, an attack on uh, Iran. Well, he gave the reason why we have to uh, win this war. Obama's just doing a wonderful job of doing the necessary, uh, making necessary military uh, preparations, which is really a call for a war, but he's trying to put it in different terms. So, uh, Yeah, that's moving back onto the front burner. Uh, continue. Uh, anything else on the agenda so far? That's all I've gotten so far. You're, you're a step ahead of me this year. Well, Jim, um, uh, expanding on this, yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff I'm going to give you today. It's it's amazing, the stuff we've got. Uh, I've got, just got to codify it all and, and, and write it all up. I've got my notes here. I actually lost my notes. I'm having to reconstruct them now. It's driving me crazy. But, Jim, uh, wh what do you make of the increased security? Do you think it's just because they know a big protest and there's so much media? Or is it more? I mean, they're acting really freaked out. And, and, and the intel I've got is they may sneak Obama, and, and Romney has denied to the press, uh, my sources, um, I'll, I'll just leave it at that, that he's attending. Uh, but uh, we've got this, um, the Republican senator from Wisconsin is on the list uh, inside. I already have that intel and a bunch of other people. So uh, it looks like this meeting is going to be very important this year. Yes, but like you said, they're very uncomfortable. They're likely to duck out on Sunday like they've done before. They just don't enjoy it when they have this much attention. Uh, opposite of what they've always wanted, they want to be absolutely 100% secret. Uh, they are, uh, for Obama, they know he'll follow orders. And they prefer to have Obama as president. And they'll throw a lot of money at him, indirectly, of course. Uh, but they know... That, the, uh, that Romney will follow orders, and, and as usual, they'll own both horse and a two-horse race, but their preference, their preferred horse, and it's starting gate number one, is uh, Obama. So your intel is that they are still leaning towards Obama as a better front man to carry out their crimes? Uh, yes, he's been very obedient so far. So the elite are very pleased with Obama. Yes, they are pleased with Obama. I'm not. Well, that's because you're a bad man. Oh, yeah. Look how <laughs> liberal I am. I voted for Obama. When you voted for Obama, you also voted for a self-proclaimed communist. Self-proclaimed until he's 41 years old and stopped because of political advice. Yeah, the, the re-education camp news confirmed is pretty shocking. Jim, amazing. We're going to talk to Mark Anderson, roving editor of American Free Press, your colleague on the other side. You're welcome after you uh, have one of your little cigarettes if you, uh, to uh, pop back in with any thoughts you've got. But Mark Anderson coming up. And Jim, I'll see you at 6 o'clock. Thank you. I'll see you at 6 o'clock. All right, folks, we'll be right back. More calls coming up. And i got a ton of other articles we haven't even gotten to yet. That's at Infowars.com. We're on the march. 
coming to you from less than a mile away from the site of Bilderberg 2012. The, the thing that didn't exist, kind of like Australia's, has a new regulation where you get a 1.1 million Aussie dollar fine if you say you don't like carbon taxes. That's actually in their newspapers. They're like, oh yes, we'll have agents in the restaurants and on the streets if we hear you. 1.1 mil, second offense, arrested. I mean, that's North Korea. <laughs> You don't cry for Kim Jong Il, or you know you go to you uh, go to jail. And uh, now the same globalist crooks who want to destroy our republic and all of free Europe and all of England and all the UK, they're here now. They're here now, uh, posing as uh, socialites. Their minions are here. Their advanced teams, and they've shut it down days before the Westville's Marion. Uh, they have some attractive uh, blonde Bond villain Swedish chick running around telling staff and others. There's a story one of the reporters was telling us this morning, we confirmed from people that work there, that, that they come through and threaten the staff. And then just say, we want you to know there's going to be full auto machine guns, which shows the woman must know nothing about guns. Or I mean, who cares? We're not scared. Look, like we've done something wrong. Charlie Skelton with the London Guardian. Big international news the last few years. He's been covering it. I've been a godsend on that front. Uh, and we're also joined by Mark Anderson, roving reporter for AmericanFreePress.net, the guys that started it all 35 years ago. Uh, they, uh, they are here with us as well. And so both of you gentlemen, uh, Charlie will be with us a little bit in the next hour. We've just got Mark until the end of this hour, but both of you riding shotgun right now. Uh, Mark, give us your data dump, your, your intel, the, the metal fence, not here four years ago, uh, them throwing me out of there today, uh, throwing the rest of the media out, now running backgrounds of all the people throwing them out. What do you make of all of this? Well, one thing I can tell you that compared to Europe, they're doing the close down a lot more aggressively this year and more in advance. Um, two years ago in Spain at uh, Sitges, um, my assistant and I were wandering through the empty hotel. Of course, it's like a funeral home before they get there. And we were unmolested. I was walking from room to room, looking all over the place, and there was nobody around, not even security that would see me or be anywhere near me. This year, you can't even breathe loudly in there without somebody watching you. Even two days ago, if you walked off the beaten path, you had somebody following you. I mean, if you didn't make a and beeline to the bathroom or the restaurant and you were looking at the art on the wall and the place looks like an art museum... There, you know, you could feel the eyes upon you. There was uh, local hotel security, and then another day later, there was some, you know, U.S. Navy license plates and other uh, kind of odd vehicles there, and it just kept escalating. I've been there several times, and each day it was more uh, furtive glances over the shoulder, you know. And since you mentioned the artwork, and I wanted to get back in this year, but I, my guys were able to, but they saw me, and I wasn't able to get in this morning. I thought I'd send them in first last night. It's like little children with black circles around their eyes. It's, it's subtle, but it's like, it's basically zombie children is the artwork. Charlie, have you seen the artwork? No, I'm not quite sure what, you, what, your, what, what artwork is this. How's his audio, guys? Good? Fantastic. Yeah, they've just got really creepy little children, you know, just standing there, you know, paintings, but then they've got black circles around their eyes. And if you look close, it's like they're dead. <laughs> okay, I, I missed that. But Mark, have you seen the creepy art? Uh, a couple of them were a little foreboding looking. I didn't look real closely. I was more um, getting the lay of the land, the lay of the hotel. Uh, I learned that they're going to meet mostly in the West Wing, kind of an ironic thing, you know, the West Wing. Um, uh, I had a contact in there who learned that, that they're mostly using the West Wing of the hotel. So I was looking at the big picture, not so much the pictures on the wall. But, yeah, a couple of them were a little, uh, you know, foreboding. I don't know if they're, you know... As macabre is what you would say, you know. But I didn't look that. Well, close. I'm a I painter. Didn't... I'm a painter. That's why. I mean, I, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm not like some great trained eye, but it's 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 pretty obvious actually if you if you look closer. Uh, but but enough of me on that. Continuing, what do you make of them running background checks? I've confirmed this with sources in the hotel uh, that they're running background checks on all everybody last night with big computer banks lined up, just like I'd seen the day of the event when they kicked us out four years ago, but this is days early and actually throwing people already checked in out. Um, I've heard a little bit about that. I don't know about the background checks in some highly technical way. I do know that, you know, as I said, they were watching people very closely, no matter who you were, no matter what you were doing.